uh, physically in which I have been for many, many years. But uh, you know what? I can't wait to be with you again as uh, we get out of this lockdown. I particularly want to say Happy Father's Day to all the commissioners and then particularly also to the, I call him, I'm, I'm going to give him a new name now. I call him the PS1, Pastor Sam 1. And then for a, a great Happy Father's Day. And also not to forget PS2, that is Pastor Sarah. Uh, uh, she's a mother, but uh, at the same time, I bet you've been mothers to so many people over time. So Happy Father's Day to the whole family at my father's house. Um, and I bring greetings from everyone right here in my own house. You know, we normally will travel down to come and spend the day with you. But uh, you know what? Uh, God is good and God is gracious. I like to, I, I came about this very interesting um, reading about Father, which I like to start with you first. Uh, it, it says here that uh, when a child is four years old, he will say, my daddy can do, any, uh, can do anything. Then at seven years old, he will say, my dad knows a lot, a whole lot. And then as the child grows to eight year old, he will say, my, my father does not know quite everything. Then at 12 years old, the child will say, oh, well, naturally, father does not know that either. Of course, I'm sure you have seen your 12 years old. You will say, dad, you don't even know that. Then at 14 years old, you will say, oh, father. Is hopelessly old fashioned. You cannot even put the computer home. Then at 21 years old, you then begin to say things like this. I'm used to that in my house. Oh, that man is out of date. And then at 25 years old, it will say they will say things like this. He knows a little bit about it, but not too much. Then it changes when they get to 30 years old. Then you start hearing stuff like this. I must find out what dad thinks about this. At 35 years, you will hear things like, before we decide, we'll get that idea first. And then at 50 years, you will hear something like, what would that have thought about that? And of course, at 60, you will say, my dad literally knows everything. And at 65, of course, your dad will have gone by then. So most people, you will say, I wish I could talk it over with dad once more. Isn't that fantastic? The cycle that a father goes through in their life. Happy Father's Day to every father in the house. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today. What an amazing day for us to be celebrating a Father's Day. We know that the father of all father is you, almighty God. And so as we come this morning uh, to honor you, uh, help us to hear specifically what your spirit is saying to us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, the role of a true father is a big one, especially if you are to see God as a model, as a model of what father should be. Because father, in many ways, they represent all that we may think or what we might imagine when we have a true father, especially when God is our father. It's like ever present and never absent at all of the time. That's our God. And that's how God wants us to be as fathers. A provider that doesn't run out of provision. That's who God is. And I guess that's what God wants us to be as a father. A defender that even defend you when you are guilty. That's what our, God, our father God is. And that's what the role of the father is. A, pro a protector, even when everything about you is exposed, that's our Father God, and that's what God wants all of us to be. An encourager, even when it looks like you've lost or you are losing, I bet you've been at races with your kids and then they are not doing best. You are saying, go on, go on. You are the best. You are the best. You know, you, you say all these things. You, you encourage, even if it looks like they are not the best in what they are doing. They will go beyond self to find you even when you are lost. That's what God has done for us. And that's what's their role as a father. They laugh with us. And then they cry with us. And I guess God laughs with us. And when we go through pain, he cries with us as well. That is the role of a father. Beyond a father, most of the times, most men, they are just not just a father, but a husband, 
a brother, a, an uncle, and a friend, and a leader most of the time. See, the role of a father is very multifaceted, and it's interesting as we see that in life. But for God, it's about not, it's not only honoring God on Father's Day one day in a year. For God, being our father is a daily honoring. In fact, it's an hourly honoring. It's the word that selects for us to honor our fathers once in once a day, a day in a year. And then to all fathers, all uncles, all brothers, all leaders today, I celebrate you. But here it is. This is where I'm going. It, in life, it is possible to take for granted people who have been there for you and people who have served the role for you as a father. That's why a Father's Day is, the day is a day to honor those who have been fathers unto us. You see, it's even possible to not to acknowledge God as a father, to take him for granted and just, you know, it's when you feel like it, you honor him. Talk less of us who are mere mortal. And God understands this. So God experiences this, even as a father, not only as a God. And then, I guess it was at a state where he felt despised as a father to his own people. And then he wrote in the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 6. And the Bible reads like this. A son honors his father. And the slave is master. If I am a father to you, where is the honor due to me? If I am a master, where is the respect due to me? Says the Lord Almighty. If it is you, it is you, priest, who shall contact for my name? But you ask, how have we shown contact for your name? Why did God ask this question? If you look at the historical antecedent of this text, the story behind the text, you understand there was a contempt towards God as father by the people. God didn't ask if I'm your God. God says, if I am your father. Because God was elevating the importance, the value that he places upon people, not just being their God, but their father. If I'm, your, if I'm truly your father, where is the honor that I am due? A subtle dishonor that offers substandard offering and leftover for God, who is the father. God said, even what you are offering to me as honor, you will not even honor it to the people outside, not even to the governors, not even to the people you, you, that are in position of authority. You will not even honor them that. And then you dishonor me as your father. How is this uh, question that God asks relevant to you and I today as we celebrate this Father's Day? Every one of us has a form of father, irrespective of our background, our circumstances, our situation, and our status in life. Today being Father's Day, we are reminded of our role as a father, and we see God as a, as a father. And we also reminded of our role, we have a representation of fatherhood in our life. Because whoever we see as a father should make us look inward and answer the questions God was asking the people. Where is my home? God perhaps is asking many of you listening to me today, just like he asked the children of Israel, where is my honor? Where is my honor as the Father God? And where is the honor to the people you look up to as your father on the face of this earth? You know, as I begin to reflect upon all of these things, then I came across, not, like, not really coming across, but I, I listed varieties of what fatherhood could be. Those who represent father that are due honor on a day like this. Number one, our heavenly father, our God almighty. So Jesus even says, pray to our father in heaven. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 9, the Bible reads, do not call anyone on earth your father. For one is your father, he who is in the heaven. 
So God was telling us that uh, don't 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 no, there's no one that is worthy of my place as a father. I am the one and the only father, one who is in the heaven. So Jesus taught us to pray, a father who is in heaven. So if we acknowledge that God is actually our father, then the question he asks, where is my honor? We must acknowledge that question and give God all the honor that is due unto him. My relationship with God as my father is, a, is in the context of true father to son. I, I really find it difficult in many ways when I'm praying, when I'm engaging with God, to see him as God. Because it's God, it's almighty God. But for me, I think I, my prayer life is more intimate and personal as I see him as father. So when I'm praying to him, I, I present him, I, I kind of see him as a father. So my, my prayer, my, my everything that comes from me is to a father. So he, if you ever listen to my prayer, it, it, it doesn't sound like a prayer prayer. It sounds like I'm having a conversation. Not with a God, quote and unquote, but with a father. It's like I'm talking to my father. I, I, often I wake up and I say, hi, dad. Good morning. You know, how, how are you? Thanks for waking me up. So you, it's a deeper relationship. And part of that is to honor him as a father. Number two is whom we consider as our biological father. The father in which we brought us to this world through the DNA. And then the Bible reads in Proverbs 23, 22, it says, listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. Bible, very clear. He said, listen to your father who gave you life. You see, my wife loves to watch this particular program called Paternity Court. I mean, there seems to be the only program she watched, she watches. Uh, she watched on TV in her bedroom. So every night I am conditioned to watch paternity uh, court, maybe because she's also a lawyer in that sense. And there will be cases upon cases upon cases upon cases upon cases. And then it then occurred to me, why did they call it paternity court, not a maternity court? Because the court is there to determine who is the father. There is never a question, who is the mother? You never question maternity. You only question paternity. And then you will see children who will come onto the court. Uh, into the court, you will see a different fathers. Uh, they will do tests. They are hungry. They, they, they are desperate to know in whose DNA, in whose loin they have come into this world. They want to know who actually is my real father. You will see mother who brought so many fathers to the court, test upon test upon test, to assure the child who exactly is the father. There is never a question for maternity, but there's always a question of paternity. Why? Because of the role a father is in a person's life. So it is important to honor those who are biological father. You might say to me, but my father is useless. I never look after me. He never cares for me. I don't even know where my father is. But the Bible says it. That it is key and important for our biological father. Who, through whose DNA we came into this world. And the third type of fatherhood is what I call the legal father. Fatherhood by legal responsibility. Now, it's possible that the person that is a father unto us might not be the one that gave birth to us through whose DNA we came to this world. So you will see many fathers. They will, they will, they will, be, they will father so many children that are not theirs. They will, they will take them from the early age. They even bear their name in some instances. And they will look after them. So they become like a legal father. They, they, they are responsible for the upgrowing. And there might be some of you who perform that role as a father. And there might be people that have performed that role in your life. So in Genesis 45 verses 8, the Bible reads, So now it was not you, that was Joseph saying that, who sent me here. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. So Joseph was saying that uh, my responsibility 
of fatherhood is not because of you. I might not be your DNA father, but it is God who has made me a father. It is God who has legalized my fatherhood. So honor is due to such fathers. And then there is another type of father, which I call the adopted father. Well, so there are so many adopted fathers. I am, I am an uh, adopted, uh, I, I, am, I have so many adopted children, if you put it that way. So you are, you are fatherhood by model and care. Because the model of how you live your life become what the children or the people that look up onto you, they adopt into their lives. So Philippians 3, 17 says, Brothers and sisters, together follow my example and observe those who live by the pattern we gave to you. So th there are people in our lives that as we see them, they model what Father would you could look on for us. One of those adopted fathers for me will be like my, uh, my brother or my uncle. When my father died when I was 13 years old and I was going to miss it totally in life, my uncle came into my life as my adopted father, through whom he tutored me. He, he, put, he became an example. He led me in the right way. Now, even being grown up, my elder brother is almost like my father. He would tell, he would, often he would tell me, don't do this, do this, go this way, go the other way. I, I don't have any model of father than him. So he has adopted me as a father in that sense. And then we have what I call spiritual father. Number five, spiritual father. So our pastors are like our spiritual father. Our leaders, they are like our spiritual leader. And the Bible says we should honor them. It's like them saying, God saying through them, where is my honor? First Corinthians chapter 4, verses 15, it says, For though you might have 10,000 instructions in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. The Bible was saying that uh, you might have 10,000 instructors out in there. But because of the grace that God has given to us in our spiritual capacity, God, not any other one, has called us to be a father unto you. So Apostle Paul was saying this as he was writing to the church in Corinthians, that Yet you do not have many fathers, very few fathers in Christ Jesus. But you might have many instructors, many motivational speakers, many uh, people all over in there. But really, when it comes to those who are your father in Christ Jesus, he said, I have been called to be through the gospel, through Christ Jesus. And that's why we look up on those who have become a spiritual father. A day like today requires that we honor them. And then the last kind of fatherhood that for me, that's what touches my heart most of all of this, apart from the heavenly father, be my father, is what I call the maternal father. Why is this a maternal father? These are the single mothers who have assumed the role of the father. They are single, either separated, widowed, divorced, but from the early age, they don't only perform the role of the mother, but they also perform the role of the father. They are the ones that take the kids to school. They are there on the football days. They take them to lesson. They take them to the, the piano. Test. They take them to everything. So they, they pay the bill. They put food on the table for them. They, they, they protect them. The, all the roles that the father could ever do, they, they are responsible for, for those roles. That's why my heart goes out a lot for single mothers. You are the true hero of Father's Day. Forget all fathers. You are the true model. And you are the true hero. Why? Because you perform both the role of the mother and you perform both the role of the father. You are actually the one that is worth to be applauded today as the true father. You know, for me, it is important because when my father died and when I was 13 years old, my mother took that role of both a father and a mother for five of us. He paid the bill. He provided roof upon our, our, our head. He, he bought the food that we eat. He struggled 
the effort of two people became one person's effort. So if you're asking me who is my hero today on this Father's Day, apart from my dad that has passed on, I will say my mother is indeed the true father that stood for me. And I guess it will be like that for so many people. For one reason or the other, that you are, uh, you are, uh, you, you are, you are, either you are separated, widow, or divorced, but you know what? God is with you and you are the hero. And so there are so many Bible texts that gives us a, a, a direction and leading that such people should be honored. And throughout the Bible, I, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you will see that God speaking in Exodus 20 verses 12 about why this is important, why fathers and mothers are equally both important. He says, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord God has given you. So God, God knew this is so important. He inscribed it in the law as he gave it to the children of, uh, the children of Israel which is part of what we adhere to. He said, you have to honor. The key word there is honor. If you go back to Malachi, God asks the people, where is my honor? And the same thing God is saying that uh, you, woman being, honor your fathers and honor your mothers. Moses, engraving this into the heart of the people in Deuteronomy 5.16, he repeated it. Honor your father and your mother. As the Lord your God has commanded you, referring it back to Exodus, as the Lord has commanded you that your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord God has given you. Two things that comes out of when you honor your father. One, your days will be long. Two, it shall be well with you wherever you find yourself. And then as if that is not enough, you know, it's, it's easy to forget all these things. Paul was writing to the church in Ephesus. In Ephesians 6, 2, he reads this. Honor, from Amplified Version, Ephesians 6, 2, he said, Honor, esteem, value as precious your father and your mother and be respectful to them. This is the first commandment with a promise throughout the Bible, from the law to Moses telling the people and to Apostle Paul, even if you read through the gospel, Jesus kept mentioning about the honoring of the father and the mother. It's so important to take this and not to let it pass away. It's God's word so that you may live long and it may be well with you. Why is honoring fathers so important to God? Number one, the word of God says so. It's a command to honor our father and our mother will represent fatherhood unto us. Number two, because they gave us life. We came to this world through them. Number three, because God created that role of a father. If he created just a mother, he created a man and a woman, father and mothers. Because when we do that, our life will be long and will be well with us. And also, it affects the way we relate with God. When we honor our fathers and our mothers, it actually affects the way we see God and the way we relate to God. Because most unique is the role of a father. Because a father is a man who reflects the image of his father in heaven and who makes it easier for his children to know their, father, their, evil, their father's heavenly father. When your children see the way you honor your father. There will be no doubt in the way you speak about your heavenly father. And there will be no doubt in the way they see fatherhood and as they live the rest of their lives. How do we honor our father then? You ask me, what do you do? What are you going to do today to honor your father? From Father God, from everybody that represents fatherhood to you. Number one is the respect. That was what God was asking for in the book of Malachi. Number two, acknowledge that role of a father. You know, it's possible, like I said, there are so many absentee fathers. 74% of most homes are of single parents. Not because the father died, but because the fathers are not just there. But that doesn't take 
take away the acknowledgement that there is fatherhood. If a single parent and the father of your children are still living, may I encourage you? It might be tight, but you want to obey the word of God. Give the phone to your kids. Let them call their father. That might be the reconciling part that brings healing. I know you might be hurt. I know you might be feeling that, no, I can't do that. The man has been away. He, he, he didn't even look back. He didn't even give anything. I've been struggling with the children. Follow the word of God and see what God will do. Maybe you had a, a big altercation with your father. You've not spoken to him for years. Take the phone today. Obey the word of God. Call him and say, Dad, if not for anything, because the word of God says so, and because the word of God says I should honor my father, I honor you today. And I'm calling you to say thank you. It makes a lot of difference. You are not doing it for anybody. You are doing it because you are in obedience to God. Because number one way in which you can honor God is to obey God. And to obey God oftentimes is to do something that is difficult. Part of it is to acknowledge the role that as a father they brought you onto the face of this world. And the same thing goes for everybody that represents fatherhood in every form, in any way in our lives. Our spiritual father, our adopted father, our legal father, our maternal father, to acknowledge them today, to what a day to say thank you and to honor them. Communicate, find a, ton a tunnel to engage with them. A tunnel and a funnel to embrace them afresh and anew. And lastly, how do you honor them? Appreciate, appreciate them through a gift, through a note, through something. Because mere words is fantastic. Or even having it in your heart is great. But nothing, nothing compares to when you offer them something as an appreciation. And that was exactly what God was saying in Malachi. You read it again. God was saying to the people that, uh, you say you honor me, and when you bring offering, you bring a one-eye lamp with the leg broken, you bring the worst of what you have. Some don't even bring anything at all. So you honor, honor me with your lips. What, what, are, what are you guys doing? Is that the way to honor somebody you call your father? So God was really upset with the people. He said the sacrifice you are bringing as a form of honor doesn't even come from your heart. You are bringing leftovers for me. You despise me. You, 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 you're, you're taking me for granted as your father. God says, where is my honor? If I'm truly your father, don't I deserve some honor? Exactly. The same thing God is saying to many of us today. If there's anybody you see as a father, extend an, appreci an appreciative gift. Words, kind words, telephone calls. But if God provides for you and you want to push it ahead, just a gift, just to say, Maybe once in a year, thank you for all that you have done for me. As I round off, I want you to think of God as your father. And I want you to pause at this particular moment with me just to honor God. I just want you to take a time just to honor him in your own heart, in your own mind, for who he is to you as a great father, always there for you. He knew your end from the beginning. He saved you. He provided for you. He protected you. He gave you life. Everything you have is through him and in him and by him. He's a really good, good father. Honor him for he's worthy of our honor. And worthy of our praise. I also want you to think of your natural father. No matter what role they play in your life. Good, bad, or whatever it is. But I want you to thank God for your natural father. Through whose loin you came into this world. Just thank God for them. And if they are alive, pray a prayer of blessing over your natural father. 
pray that God will keep them. God will watch over them. God will make the latter years of their lives to be better than the former. Pray the grace of God upon them. Pray the health of God upon them. And decide in your heart today what you're going to do to honor them. Lastly, I want you to think of everyone that has stood as a father for you. Your spiritual father, your maternal father, your legal father, your adopted father. Just take a moment and think about how they've been gracious to you and thank God for their lives. Pray the blessings of God over them. Honor them from your being, from your spirit. Pray the blessings of God upon their lives. And lastly, if you know them, if they are nearer to you today, or you can reach out to them, call them, express your appreciation. If you can reach out to them despite being locked down, ask them what would they like. Send them a gift just to say, Dad, this is just a pen, this is just a socks, this is just an handkerchief, this is just a tie, just to say thank you for all you have done. Now let me pray a Father's blessing over you as I bring this service to a close. I pray now that God will release the dews of heaven to water your dreams and fulfill your purpose. May God grace each one of you fathers with divine fatness and fertility of the land wherever you step into on this face of the heart. May God give you an abundance of seed and new wine that your bands may continually be filled May people serve you and may nations bow down to you. May you become the Lord and Master in your proficiency and have dominion in your competency. May you receive honor wherever you go and with everyone that you meet. May God's blessing rest and reign upon you. May you be the Father that is worthy of honor before the Almighty God. Even as each person here Honors God. May God open up the windows of honor over your own life in the name of Jesus. I pray for every struggling father right now. May God strengthen you. May God empower you. May God enable you. And I pray for those who are feeling bitter because the father is neither around or they have a bad memory of their father. Father, may you heal them. May you comfort them. May you give them a memory that they can think back and say, Oh God, you have been great. And you have been gracious. May you be an oppression in the heart of men today. I pray for all the young ones, particularly the children. May they go to have an image of Father God. And may that image be represented in their own father as they see them. I pray for the whole family of the, my father's house, that today they may enter into a divine blessings of God. I pray for Pastor Sam, as you have called him to be the father over that house. May the holy and the anointing of God never fall short in his life in the name of Jesus. May he become an history maker and a world changer. May the dew of heaven continue to be released upon his life. May that church be known for what his name is, a true father's house. I mean, the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.